lift the name of Jesus. For the past weeks, we are already hearing about this teaching, about lifting the name of Jesus in this nation, in this city, in this community, in this church, in our workplaces. We've been hearing that through the teachings of Jesus about the I Am. We've heard that I am the way, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We've heard that Jesus is, I am the truth, that Jesus is the truth that would set you free. And we also have heard that I am the door. He is the door that if we were going to enter that door, Jesus, we are going to find fulfillment, joy in our lives. We also heard about this teaching about Jesus. That I am the shepherd who would lead us to the greener pasture. Who would lead us and protect us from all the problems and trials in life. Yes, there are trials and pressures in life. We are not exempted with that. But with the shepherd, we are saved. We also heard about Jesus. I am the resurrection. That there is power in resurrection. But I would like to tell you today, we are going to, to, to break from that series. Don't worry, we are going to continue that next Sunday. Today, I would like to talk about the reality of life when we follow Jesus. I want to talk about that. that when we follow Jesus Christ, when we obey Jesus, when we obey God, The reality of life is there is still testings in life. And I would like to talk about testings. Uni students, primary students, secondary students. Sometimes we are afraid about testings, about exams. But actually, you know what? Testings, exams are for your own good. Without tests, without exams, you won't be prepared for the next level. Today, I would like to talk about this reality in life. Whether we lift the name of Jesus in this church, in this community, which we are been, we've been hearing for many weeks now. The reality is we are going to experience testings in life. And we are going to learn from this great man in the Bible, whom we really appreciate, whom we really admire because of his faith in the Old Testament. Who is this man? Yes, Abraham. Abraham is known as the father of faith from the Bible. And let me tell you this, church. Abraham didn't become the father of faith just an overnight thing. Abraham didn't just become the father of faith, not without a testing. There are so many testings in the life of Abraham. If you know Abraham, if you know the Bible in, jo in Genesis, he was called by God to leave his family, his country, to go to the land of the promise, which is, the, which is Israel. God called him to leave his family. That's a testing. Imagine God would call you to leave your nation, to leave your family, and to go to the place unknown to you. That's what happened to Abraham. And when he left his family, his nation, he went to this place, the promised land. He found out that the place was in famine. Again, after I obeyed you, after I followed you, God, then you brought me to a place that is in famine. Again, that's a testing. And he went to Egypt because the place that God promised him was experiencing famine. And he went to Egypt and there was some testing there. But you know what? During the time when Abraham followed God, he was prospering actually. His cattle, his herds, was really growing in numbers. The territory, his, the, his influence was actually growing. He was really growing. 
and he was really becoming influential and stronger man, but not without a testing. And he was promised by God to become the father of many nations. And many nations will be blessed through him. That's why we are here. We could worship God here down and under. That's why we are here. We could worship God because of the faith of Abraham. But don't think that Abraham just walked in the park. Don't think that Abraham just had a smooth sailing. He went through so many testings in life. And that made Abraham so special. During his past age, 100 years old, and his wife Sarai, 90 years old, that's the only time they had a son who's going to fulfill the birth of the nations. Imagine, they've, they've waited for this son, this son Isaac. For 10 years, God promised them to have a child who would become the fulfillment of the nation. But for 10 years, no answer. But after 10 years, when Abraham was already 100 and Sarah was about 90 years old, that's the time. Finally, the fulfillment of the promise is here through Isaac. And then, there will be a nation. And many nations will start from Abraham to Isaac at the old age. That's the story. That's the faith. Then, in Genesis 22, after Abraham received all the promise, he was expanding, he was enlarging, he was growing, he's becoming influential, he was becoming powerful. And in Genesis 22, it says there, God tested Abraham. Have you heard the story of Abraham when God tested him? Have you heard that story? Oh, this is a Sunday school thing. So we are going to review our Sunday school story. But I hope that you're going to learn something out of it. About testing in life. Testing. God tested Abraham. Mm. What? Testing. This word is actually foreign to many people during that time. Actually testing from God. The God whom they knew. The good God, faithful God, the creator of heaven and earth would, would test them. We thought that Father, our Father, our God would just, is compassionate, who would help us, encourage us, teach us the good things. But why test things? Why would God test Abraham, why would God test his people, his children? He was promised to have a son, but this time he would be tested. But the book of James actually put it into right perspective. Okay? When you are experiencing right now some testing, some trials in life, let me tell you this. Let's go first to the New Testament before we go back to the story of Abraham in order for us to put these things in perspective, right? Perspective. Consider it pure joy. My brothers, my sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, the Bible tells us to consider it pure joy. To rejoice when you are facing trials. The Bible did says that if you face trials, it says here, whenever, because it is real, it is true that we are, we are all going to face trials. No one will be exempted with trials. Can you raise your hand here if you don't experience trials, maybe last week or last month if you don't experience trials or testings in life let me tell you this maybe tomorrow you're going to experience one 
because no one is exempted with trials and testing. And I consider pure joy. James said, be joyful, rejoice whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know, you know why we are going to rejoice, why we are going to, to consider with pure joy when we are facing trials. Because you know, you know that the testings of your faith produces perseverance because there will be a result. There will be a good outcome of your testings. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's why we have the reason. This is the reason why we could rejoice when we are facing trials in life. And I would like to entitle this message today, God tests you for your good. Can you tell that to yourself right now in your mind? God's testing me for my good. How about tell the person next to you, God tests you for your good. Come on, tell the person next to you. I would like to tell you today, church, that your testing is for your good. When God tests you, that's for your good. Maybe you're smooth sailing right now. Maybe you're walking in the park. You, you followed God. You obeyed God in everything. Just falling into the right place. And all of a sudden... I'm sorry, you, you're quite uh, shy about that. Uh, because maybe there are some people here sleeping already because you know it's 2 o'clock. That's why I need to wake you up. Let me tell you this. If you are experiencing testing in life, that's for your good. It's not to harm you. It's not to make you miserable. It's not to make you poor. It's not to make you suffer. But it's for your own good. Come on, let's go directly to the story of Abraham. When you are going through testings in life right now, I'm sure how this church or 80% or 99% of this church are being tested right now. But you are being, you are being tested right now. Come on, let it God wants more of you. God wants more of you. Let's go to the story of Abraham sometime later. After all these things that Abraham experienced from Genesis 11, 12 to 21, where he was being enlarged, when he was growing, then God tested Abraham. You're walking in the park, everything's smooth, you had a pay rise, you got promoted, but all of a sudden there was this testing. Something later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, Abraham, here I am, replied. Do you think that after I followed Christ, when I was young back then, when I was maybe 19 years old, if I got everything in life, such as money, fame, job, you know what? When I followed Christ, I got my beautiful wife. Yes, praise God. I had a great job. I got everything. I got so many friends. Everything I asked for, it was given to me. I wish. It's not. Do you think after I followed Christ, and if I got everything in life, just money, fame, job, family, and power, would I still be needing God? No way. I can do it without the help of God. If we are going to be honest today, we can say that people tend to forget God when life is running smooth. Let's be honest. That's the real thing. We tend to forget God when life is running smooth. Let me tell you, if that happens, God 
Personally, God doesn't want that. God doesn't want us. To go far away from Him. And God as our Father, God doesn't want that. Because this is not good for you. Testing is God's way of getting your attention to bring you closer back to Him. Perhaps Abraham, when Abraham already got his son, Isaac, all right, this is it, Lord. This is now the fulfillment of the promise. My mind, my eyes is so focused right now to Isaac who would fulfill the promise of having a great nation. Maybe he's so much focused with Isaac, he already forget about God. He already depended so much on Isaac and he already forgot about God. Who would actually, the source of everything, who would actually fulfill all the promises in the Bible, but now maybe his eyes are already on Isaac, who would be the fulfillment of the promise. But God knew that's not the right thing to do. That's why he tried to get the attention of Isaac by testing Isaac because God wants more of Abraham. I want you, Abraham. I don't want to lose you. I would do anything to bring you back to me. That's why I, I need to test you, to call your attention, to get your attention. I would do it and I would ask you something that would really or might this devastate your life? That would be in the next verse. He said to Abraham, Here I am. But this is what we would like, isn't it, parents? This is what the answer that we would like to hear from our children. Oh, here I am. What a nice phrase or statement from your children to hear that here I am, Dad. Here I am, Mom. Isn't that with you like? Come on, parents, help me here. Isn't it? Right. Sometimes, if you, can, if you would like to hear that, give them some testings. Ah, no, 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 no. But what I'm trying to tell you, here, what a sweet, sweet word from Abraham. To, here I am. That's the reply. God wants more of him. You know what? Perhaps God is calling you today. Did he call Abraham? Maybe God is calling you today. He's calling your attention. Jeff? Jen? Justin? June? Joy? Maybe God is calling you right now. Are you going to answer here? I am, Lord. God wants more of you. You know, sometimes we are making things so complicated in our lives. When we walk away from God because we are so much focused on so many things, we are so much focused in even in the gifts of God in our lives, we tend to forget God. But let me tell you, test things can be God's way of bringing you closer to Him because He wants more of you. So church, brothers and sisters, consider it your joy when God is testing you because God wants more of you. That's for your advantage. If God wants you to be closer to Him. That's for your advantage. When you're going through some tough times today, church, go and consider it your joy. Because God wants more of you. Second point is, God wants more from you. It's not just God wants more of you. God wants more from you. This is much more difficult. Verse 22 says, this is what God wants from Abraham. Take your son, your only son. If you know your Bible, you know that it's not only Isaac, his son. It's actually his first son was Ishmael, but Ishmael was, Ishmael was already gone. And Ishmael was really his, the son of the promise. The son of the promise is Isaac. 
Yes, Isaac was the second son, but he was loved by Abraham because he was the promise, the, the promised son who would fulfill the nations and many nations would start from Isaac. But after so many years of waiting, Abraham was asked by God to give his son, your only son whom you love, not just give, what? Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. You know what's burnt offering? The word itself says burnt. I mean, it says you have to burn Isaac. First, you need to kill him in order for you to offer him to God. You are going to kill the son of promise, the one who's going to fulfill the nation and many nations that was promised by God and God. What kind of God are you? Is it, are you insane, Lord? You're asking me something that is un, unexplainable. It is, it is crazy, Lord. That kind of thing that you're asking me. I don't think I don't think I could get that. Let's see this the answer of, of, of Abraham. God wants more from you. And from the following verse we could find and we could learn what are the things God wants from Abraham. And maybe these are the things that God wants from you as well. God wants more from you. First is your precious possession. Again, Testings things from the Lord is not for your it's not to destroy you it's not for you to become miserable but it looks like Abraham will, be, will become miserable in this area imagine the son the only son imagine yourself put yourself in the situation of Abraham you have your only son and God would ask you to offer that son to him. What's your reply? How would you respond to God? What's your most precious possession? Can you give that to God? Remember, God wants more from you. Can you imagine Abraham? We're so quiet here today. I know this is a very, very difficult teaching. But actually, this is a very loved story in the Bible. But when, when it's about, when we're about to act it out, to live it out, that's the very hard part. What's your most precious possession? Can you give that to God? No? But have you thought about Abraham's precious possession? His son. Your precious possession can be your idol. Idol can be described as to some things that a person relies on for his future. This is it. This is my future. I rely on this too much. Idol is something that separates you from God. God wants to be on top. God wants to be the first. God wants to be the first. Abraham could have been focusing too much on Isaac already to fulfill the promise. God doesn't want that. That's why He asked, Give me and offer your son to Him, to me. Who's your Isaac? Or what is your Isaac? Now you're thinking already, Oh, I know Pastor Jude would ask it to me later at the end of the service to offer my Isaac. Let me finish first. Who's your Isaac? Who's your precious possession? What is your most precious possession? Beware. God will ask that from you. If that thing of that person 
is separating you from God. If you're focusing so much on that thing and not God, God will ask you that. Second thing that God wants from you is your obedience. First is your precious possession. And as we continue to read verse 3 of the Bible in Genesis, it says, Early the next morning after God asked Abraham to offer his son Isaac, early the next morning Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants, his son Isaac. Imagine, after God talked to him in the evening, right after that conversation, maybe I don't know if he was able to sleep or what, but one thing I'm sure, he's ready to obey God. Early in the morning, this tells us, this tells me that, wow, he didn't even bargain, Lord, can I talk it over with my wife? Can we just delay it maybe, Lord, for, 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 for one week, Lord, let me let me enjoy my son first before offering him to you? Can we, Lord, uh, we we had a picnic tomorrow, Lord. Can we all can we can we delay this picnic? No. Immediately after a conversation, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He did everything he needed to do. He took with him to his service in sun when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering. Imagine the life of what the situation. Well thinking he even cut the wood that would be used for the sacrifice, for the offering. And then he set out and go to the to the Mount of Moriah. Church, many things many, our generation right now, we are we are good at saying wait. Have you have you experienced that to your children? Can you please uh take out the rubbish bin outside? Wait Oh, I think the parents, they're really uh, uh, into this. But you know what? Even as adults, we are also guilty of this. <laughs> we always would like to say, wait, especially when it comes to the Word of God. Because we are so much busy. Oh, yes, our postmodern generation now, they are so much busy with their gadgets, with their phones. How about us adults? And God calls us, what are the things that stops us from obeying God right away? Remember, delayed obedience is also disobedience. When you say wait, that's already disobedience from the Lord. Perhaps the perfect timing is now, not tomorrow, not next week. But the perfect timing of the Word of God, the call of God into your life is now. Abraham exemplified true obedience in this verse. Right away, early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey. When God calls you or asks you to do something, He wants your obedience. The key is obedience. Never doubt God. If you believe God is omnipotent, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, he is all-powerful God, the Almighty God. Why would you say no to His call? Thirdly, let's go on. So first is precious possession. God wants from you your precious possession. Beware your obedience. And of course, God, when you obey God, God wants your trust. Let's continue reading the story. So one, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then, on the third day, so three days, they were traveling for three days from the house to Mount Moriah. And when they saw the Mount Moriah, I could just imagine the trust of Abraham from the time he heard the call of God to offer your son. Imagine what went through, what went in the mind of Abraham killing his own son? Can you put yourself in this situation? Giving your own son, giving my son Maho or my daughter Ia to God? I, I, I was about to kill them. And then I saddled the donkey. Maybe the first night we were traveling, we were rested. I'm looking at my son or my daughter. I'm going to kill him. 
Imagine for three days. That was on his mind. That was his mind. How could you? How could you, God? He could have he could have run away on the second day or the first day. He could have run away like Jonah and not and disobeyed God. But he trusted God. First day he continued. Second day he continued. He continued walking. Go he went to Mount Moriah. Second month, third month, fourth month, we've been waiting for God. Just trust, just trust, just trust God. He trusted God. And then when he, in verse 5, he said, he said to his servants, when they saw Ray, Mount Moriah, they are about to climb. Stay here with the donkey while I, I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. What? We will come back to you? See? That's trust. He didn't just obey, but he trusted God. He said to the servant, we will come back to you. Isn't it that Abraham was about to offer and kill Isaac? And why would he tell the servant that he will come back to you? There, in the back of his mind, he knew that God will do something about it. He knew he trusted God. He knew. Do you know it? Do you know when you give something to the Lord that God can reverse or God? Yes, God may kill Isaac. But God has the ability, has the power to bring him back to life. That's trust. I will come, we will come back to you. And Abraham took the wood. Can you just imagine the drama happening here? He took the wood, the burnt offering, and placed it into his son Isaac. Can you imagine? You carried your own firewood that would kill you, that would burn you. And he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke and said to his father Abraham, Father, wow, what a point. Not what I felt the pain here when, when, when Isaac asked his father, Father, yes, my son, the firewood are here. Isaac said, But where is the lamb? Can you feel the pain, the drama? Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? <laughs> yes. Abraham trusted. God wants more trust from Abraham. This is what he said. God himself will provide. God himself will provide the lamb, the bird offering, my son. The two of them went on together. That's trust. That's trust. For three days, he continued walking went to Mount Moriah. He exemplified the true trust. In Hebrews 11, it says something like this, Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants be counted. Because he knew exactly the promise of God that through Isaac, the nation would start he held on to the promise. If you had a promise from the Lord, hold on to that promise. Abraham held on to that promise that Isaac will be the start of many nations. If God will kill Isaac, then he is a liar. How can Isaac be the start of many nations if God himself, the true God, the living God that we say, will kill but even then, even God would kill Isaac. It is, this is what the, the Bible declares in Hebrews 11, 18. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in manner speaking dead, speaking that he did receive Isaac back from dead. 
they need to say even Isa, Isa would be there at that moment. God has the ability to bring him back to life. That's what Abraham held on. So Abraham took the wood and that's the story. And fourthly, what God wants from you, from Abraham, is commitment. First, He wants your precious possession. And He wants you to obey. He wants more of your trust. He wants more of your commitment. He wants more of your commitment. If you're going to read this, you can see the drama here. When they reach the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar. Maybe that's the, that's, the, that's the longest time that he built it. He's just trying to, he's trying to prolong his time with his son. Oh my goodness. What's, he didn't know exactly what's going to happen next. He just built the altar. He arranged the wood. And while you're going, he bound his son. He sacrificed. And he laid them on the altar. On top of the wood. Can you see? Can you just imagine. Then he reached out his hand and took his knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, again there's the answer of Abraham, here I am, second time, for the second time, he replied to God, here I am Lord, what a sweet, sweet statement, what a sweet, sweet reply from Abraham, here I am, he replied, can you see the commitment of Abraham here? I know it's so painful for him to see his son already lying down. Who already was about to kill him. I can feel the pain, the agony of the father Abraham for his son. He was about to be killed. But he was committed. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know your situation right now. But just keep building the altar. Arrange the wood. Do what's necessary. Keep going to church. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep, just go to your workplace. Oh, again, I'm going to see my boss. He's so mean to me. Just keep going there. Just keep clocking in. On time, okay? Not late. On time. If it is 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock should be there. Just keep doing what is right. Be committed to what you're doing. Be committed to what God has called you to do. Just keep bringing the people here in front and just parking marshal. Just keep doing what you're doing. Arranging the lines, the chairs. Just keep doing. Just be committed. I know we are all have troubles here. We are all some we have some pains here. We are in we are so We are struggling in so many areas of our life. Just keep doing what you need to do. Be, stay committed to what God has called you to do. But you don't know exactly what's going to happen next. Just like Abraham. He didn't know exactly what's going to happen next. He just built the altar. Laid his son there. To about to kill and let's go, here I am. Can you say that, Lord? No, Lee, no, Lee. What again, Lord? You're calling me again. Here's already here. What do you need me? What do you want me to do again? Isn't he here? I'm going to kill my son. What, what's next? Here I am. He's ready to listen. He's ready to do what God would ask him to do. That's commitment. And the last point that I would like to share to you, JC, if you would like to accompany me here, God wants more for you. 
First thing, you're experiencing testings in life because God wants more of you. Secondly, God wants more from you. Thirdly, God wants more for you. You are not in the losing end here. When God tests you, you won't lose. If God asks you something, you won't lose. No, it's not. Don't think if you're going to give so many things to the Lord, your life, your time, your money, your everything in you, don't think that you are in the losing end. No. Do you really think that God will ask something so precious to you just to bring pain to your life? Is that the kind of God that you think that we are serving here? Do you think that God will ask you something that will only bring pain, that will make your life miserable, that will make you suffer? No, we don't have that kind of God here. God may ask you from you. God may ask you to give up your friend, your relationship, even your money. God Himself, let me tell you, God created the problem. But He was the one who solved it, actually. Do not lay hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God. He passed the test. Because you have not withheld from me your son. Your only son, actually. Abraham looked up and there in, in a thicket. He saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram. And sacrifice it as a burnt offering. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. God wants more for you. And God and Abraham will not discover that the Lord will provide if he didn't obey God. The reason why he discovered that the Lord will provide is because he obeyed God. And to this day and said on the mountain, the Lord, it will provide. God wants you to pass the test. Yes, He wants you to pass the test. No good teacher will desire to fail his student. God wants you to pass the test because He wants you to see more. He wants to show you more. He wants you to pass the test in order for you to experience the next level. And the angel of the Lord called Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this, because you have done this, because you have done this, because you obeyed me, because you have committed your life to me, because you surrendered your precious possession to me, because you trusted me, because you gave and surrendered everything to me, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. And that's the fulfillment, actually. And make your descendants numerous. Isn't this more for you? It's not actually more for God. This is more for you. Your descendants will take possessions of the sins of their enemies. And though and through your offsprings, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. The key here, church, is to obey. You won't be in the losing end if you obey God. We are not serving a God who is so mean, a tyrannic, a, a, tyr a tyrannic God. He is a good God. He knew everything, past, present, and future. He knew actually that there will be a ram on the side of Mount Moriah in replacement for the offering for. Isaac. 
The ram is waiting for you there outside, perhaps. Because God will provide for you. He passed the test. Abraham passed the test. But don't think that's the last test of Abraham in his life. When you pass a test, yes, you can thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But don't be complacent. There's one coming up. Spoiler alert. God, because God will not allow you to stay where you are. But He wants you to grow more and more. It's not good for you to stay in primary school. It's not good for you to stay just in a secondary school. You need to pass the test tomorrow again and again and again in order for you to be in the uni. You know what? I started with 10 kgs dumbbells for my bench press. But my son Marco pushed me. And now I could lift how many, Stephen? 25 kgs. But uh, that's why I, I hurt my... <laughs> You know what? That's, that's how God deals with us. He'll continue to test us to make us more stronger. It's like God testing you, then you pass the test, you became stronger, then another test, and then you would pass the test, you would become more stronger, more weights, 5 kgs, 2 kgs, 3 kgs, or what have you. It could be a test of finances. It could be a test of relationships. It could be a test of health. It could be a test of your job. But you could take joy. You could take joy. The next time you would experience test things, you could take joy. Because you know the end result. This is for your own good. Test Mike. You know what? The more you become stronger in your faith, the more you would trust God. And the more you trust God, the more God will entrust you of something bigger. Because He knows you would trust Him for that. How can Abraham become ready to be blessed? By, by many nations if he's not ready and prepared through the testings that he endured. Church, God wants more for you. But you have to focus not on your Isaac but to him alone. Don't be afraid to let go of your Isaac today. What's your Isaac? God himself will provide a ram for you. If He asks you for something, God Himself will provide. And He will make a way when there seems to be no way. A ram is already there, waiting for you. Just let go of your own Isaac in order for for you to see that ram. Because you are being prepared for greater things ahead. Today, church, I want to open my pride. Today, I want to open my personal ambition. Do you think if you're going to open your personal ambition that God can make a way in order for you for, to have your ambition to come true? He's powerful. He is the creator of heavens and the earth. Do you think if you're going to surrender your future to God, do you think God cannot really direct your future? Today I want to surrender my finances to God, which I already did actually a long time ago. I already asked my God as my, as my accountant. No problem for Him, because there's nothing to account. Because I live by faith and not by sight. My health, my time, my time is already for God. My ministry, 
this is not my ministry, this is God's ministry. My wife, my wife knows that, is only the second. Is the not, she's not the number one. He's not jealous about that. She's not jealous about that because she knows that if I'm going to put her first, she'll be in trouble. I'll find other girls. My kids, they're not my top priority. My top priority is God. I already surrendered my kids to God. Let God take control of their lives. My son, my daughter, they already surrendered to God. But even if Abraham lost his son Isaac, the Bible declares Abraham believes that God can bring Isaac back to life. Even though God will take my family to me, I believe God has the power to bring them back to me. Hundredfolds. Even if I lost my job, even if I lost my ministry, even if I lost everything to me, it doesn't matter. I could still rejoice and be joyful because I know the end result. I know the end result that God will do great things in His time. Even if you lost your car, even if you lost your friend, even if you lose your, your relationship, even if you lose your money, even though you lose your time, God can bring it back to you. Do you believe that? God can bring it back to you, but if I lose my God, then I am lost. I can lose everything in this life, but I don't want to lose my God. Not just for a second. I don't want to lose God. Because He has the power to give life, to bring back, to have everything.